risk. Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon and welcome to the, what is it? Today is the April 14th, the uh, Taco Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question and in our Tigers Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Last Show. Right now, we've got all the indices in the uh, green. You've got the Dow trading up 490 points. That's 2%, a little over 2% to the upside. 2.5% for the S&P, nearly 4% for the NASDAQ. Russell's up one, a little over one. Semi's up three and a half. New York Stock Exchange, one and three quarters percent. So they're all mean and green. Spot volatility X is not mean and green. It's back about three bucks, down 7%. Gold's up five bucks, silver up 57 pennies, lights we crude off a buck 55, natural gas back four pennies, and treasuries up, well, they're basically flat, up two ticks out there. Let's go to our first caller, and that is uh, Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you? Uh, excellent. Thank you for uh, asking. And uh, Copart Inc., I believe, is what we're going to take a look at. Ticker symbol, folks, is CPRT, if you're following on your charts at home. And, Jim, how can we help you? Uh, I believe it's in a five count up on a day chart. And uh, on a 15-minute chart, it's kind of basing. I was just wondering uh, what a good entry level might be up for a trade, not a, not a real long-term hold. But okay. uh, it looks looks like it might be on a five count okay so let's, today, let's try to let's, let's go check that out let's check that out first first so let's start with because so you're asking where's a good place to enter and in essence really folks the the way that i would uh, the way that i would translate that is where is support so where is support on some type of pullback now here uh, even though jim mentioned a 15 minute time frame chart here we're taking a look at a daily a weekly and a monthly time frame and here's what we know so far about copart inc and really jim what i'm doing is i'm going to start on the right hand side and i'm going to start by taking a look at the monthly time frame which has a new profile that formed last month um price closed below it that is a bullish structured profile. If you were going to ask me before I knew what this month's candle looked like, where is resistance or where would a counter trend rally end? The price point area that I would have given you would have been 79.29 to 76.10. And what we've seen transpire so far this week, which was a couple of days ago, I believe, was it? Uh, yeah, a couple of days ago, uh, price got up to the uh, 7610 area got actually above that but so far that's resistance now that profile the reason why I would have given you 7610 to 7929 is because that's a bullish structured profile bullish in structure because the center is closer to the bottom than it is to the top 
And what I found is that on counter trend rallies, when you break bullish structured profiles, the counter trend rallies will find resistance typically at around the center of that profile. That's a 79.10, 79.29 level. But sometimes it can be the bottom of that bullish structured profile. So, so there, and I know you said not a longer term trade, but I just want you to know that from the risk reward aspect, if we were just looking at the daily chart, in the weekly chart, we would have missed that very important aspect out here. So you've got to, I'll give you support, but I can absolutely share with you resistance. And it's 76.10 out here. It's, it's just very clear at this stage of the game where it's 79.29. So that's gonna be your potential reward from your entry. With regard to support, price is above the top of its daily profile which is 67.13. So sometimes old resistance, just like old support in the case of the monthly chart, in this case, old resistance could be support. And so if you're going to buy it, I would suggest that you would look at about the 67.13 level. That is the top of that daily profile. Preferably, uh, if price it pulls back to that area, uh, you'd like to see it pull back with less than 3.3 million shares. If it's pulling back with more volume than that, then the real entry point, potential entry point, I should say, or the real level of support would be the center or bottom of its daily profile, which is a bullish structured profile. So that'd be your 6291 to 6432 level. So that's what we see just by using our market profiles, understanding where on different time frames where buyers and sellers are located. Now, um, today will be bar number four is what I've got it as. Uh, or could be bar number four, because if today's close is below the close of bar number one, that's the trading day, Jim, of April 7th, then that TD9 count pattern will um, go away. So let me just make sure that this chart is updated here, everything. Now, it doesn't have today's data, but today's data doesn't is not going to impact, well, no, it's not going to impact what we take a look at, oh, although it could be, could be bar five. But that would mean that the close has to be above bar number two out here. So uh, even though it may be in a TD nine count pattern, how is it because it's only in bar number five? How are you thinking to yourself, OK, so maybe this is going to turn into a nine count. Is that kind of the theory or logic that you're using behind trying to enter the long trade? Uh, yeah, but I didn't want to enter it uh, at, at a five. I was hoping it might pull back uh, to uh, about. Uh, let me see, about $70 or so, seventy go nine, maybe it's high, $70. Yeah. Um, let me just see what the weekly has here. Ah, the weekly chart, you know, all I see is the weekly coming back to its second level of support. That was 57.50 and just a little bit of a bounce out here. Still, I'm calling this a counter trend rally, just like the markets in general. I don't think that uh, uh, ticker symbol CPRT is any different uh, than that. This just looks to me like a weaker than market stock um, as as I take a look at it. So 65.45 is another level of support. That's basically Stevie's red line. But the reality, Jim, is if price gets down to that level, there's not going to be a five count pattern. There's not going to be a TD nine count pattern that is ongoing. So you also you always got to take a look at price, Jim, and compare it to the price level of four bars earlier for a, for a count five count or nine count to the upside. Each close has to be above that bar four bars earlier out here. Hey, we're just going through the breakout here. I don't want to cut you off or anything. So just uh, let me know what other questions you've got when we come back from break. We'll get those resolved and we'll go from there. We're on the phone with okay. Jim in Palm Harbor taking a look at uh, Copart and Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 469, S&P 69 points. We're on the line with Jim in Palm Harbor. We're taking a look at ticker symbol CPRT. That's mm -hmm. Copart, Inc. Uh, Jim, during the break, the other thing that I noticed on this equity was uh, the, the swing point or the B point of a potential A to B equals CD to the upside. Uh, that would have been the trading session from March 26. The volume there was 2.7 million shares. And as price tested it a couple of days ago, it was with, much lighter, was with lighter volume, 1.9 million shares. I don't know what percentage that is. It still was lighter volume, couldn't bust through it. And therefore, I'm going to say if this is a uh, if this is a tradable position, I would wait for price to come back to 67.13, the top of that daily box. Okay. Well, that really helps me a lot. Uh, I was just looking at it uh, on the short-term time frame from yesterday. The low was down close to 70, and it... And then on a 15-minute time frame, it was real basing-like. And I thought maybe it would dip down on a very, very, very short term, and I could hit around that price. And then uh, yeah. if you gave it the blessing on the daily, then it would be uh, a good entry like that. But I appreciate what you've said. It was really very insightful, and I, I just thank you a lot. Well, my pleasure, and, uh, and best of luck. It doesn't mean I'm right. But, um, <laughs> you know, but, no, but you're you right a lot you, more than I am, though. <laughs> well, you just want to try to put the edge on your side, right? I mean, that's what we're really looking for. And, um, and look, this couldn't bust it out to the upside. So I love Tom's expression. If you can't bust it up, it'll try to bust it down. 
And so in busting it down, if it in fact tries to do that, watch that 6713 area and just make sure it has less volume than 3.3 uh, million shares as price pulls back into that range. Okay. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. You bet. My pleasure. Uh, we had a couple of requests inside the Tiger's Den. And so let me get to those um, here before uh, before uh, BMY is one of them. So let's go take a look. That's Bristol Myers squib out here before they uh, before they get beyond areas where I can even uh, really easily see them inside the uh, post inside the Tiger's Den because I just have a very small window on my screen. So I think the question was if we could just take a look at Bristol Bristol Myers Squibb. And at this stage here, um, they suggest that where price should target, where price is, well, first there is resistance. So if you're in a long position inside of Bristol Myers Squibb, you've got resistance at 6058. And 6058, it's actually so far this month, it's gotten up to 6073 and it's backed off a bit, uh, backed off a bit out there. Um, so that's your resistance level. If you can see a close, and I would say on a daily basis above 60.58, then price likely will target the top of its weekly profile, and that's 63.19. So that's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol BMY. I hope that that uh, helps you out, whoever uh, put in a, a request for it. Um, I think there was another request inside the den. Let me just try to get to that as well. Uh, thoughts on work. WRK is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go grab that. That is for uh, Slack Technologies. Now, in the case of Slack, because it's a relatively new IPO, when I say relatively new, taking us back into July of last year, we don't have enough data on the longer term or the monthly time frame to really be able to um, help us out. So here's what we know about Slack. Uh, price today has gotten back inside its daily profile, but watch the bottom of that level. That's 2546. It's tested that area, 2546, uh, one, two, three occasions over the past handful of days. And so if it closes back below the bottom of that box, again, 2546, it ain't no buy, that's for sure. Um, uh, because it would be back below the support of really what is a bullish structured profile. If you look at that, if you look at the that cyan color, certainly closer in proximity to the bottom than it is to the top. Now, if price can close above 2546, you ought to see a move up to about the 2726 area. Resistance on the daily time frame is 29.97. On the weekly time frame, it's 29.40 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Slack Technologies ticker symbol. There is W O R K. There was also a request to go take a look at J P Morgan. So let's go do that out here. In the case of J P Morgan, you're going to want to watch the area of 93.16. 93.16 is the top of that daily profile. Now, this thing broke out a little bit to the upside. Just a couple of days ago when it gapped up with 42 million shares. When things gap up, you like to see them come back into where that breakout occurred. It's doing that right now, but you like to see them come back with lighter volume. I don't know what the end of day volume is, but you're already at 30 million shares. That doesn't mathematically to me seem like light volume. And so you've got JP Morgan pulling back um, it's still above support, still above support. But if you see it close below 93.16, it doesn't have to be today, by the way. It could be tomorrow or whenever. Then what J.P. Morgan is going to do is head back to 85.03 or 79.62. Now, what J.P. Morgan has going for it or against it is really what I should say is the financial sector. So one of the things you and I did yesterday, thankfully, was we began looking at the sectors with inside the S&P 500 to understand which ones are showing topping signals. And you had a number of banks come out with their earnings today. Well, yesterday, you've got the confirmation of a Gartley sell pattern inside of the XLF. That's what we're looking at here right now. And even with the nice move that we've seen in the Dow, out here are the financials telling you something i think the answer is yes now they topped out first we're going to see things top out just like this so so-called coronavirus economic plan where we're going to come back and not throw a light switch do you want to hear not throw a light switch anymore 
and we're just going to start, you know, bringing things back up and turning on, you know, roll, rolling, 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 rolling. I'll tell you what's going to roll. The market's going to roll to the downside out there. But the beauty is we already know that there's going to be a Supreme Court battle out here between the states and the governors who actually think they're kings out there versus the other guy that thinks he's a king. It's just going to be a king of the hill, so to speak, out here. But all of that is just going to create all kinds of economic problems for the market. And you know who one of the first ones to sniff that out? It's the financial sector. The financial sector. It has a confirmed Gartley sell pattern. And that was because of uh, yesterday's bearish reversal candle. So this is what JP Morgan and all the banks have going against them, is that you already have in if you go read H.M. Gertley's book or to the extent that you like his work or to the extent that you like Larry's work and you should like all of those things out here, just go to page 222 in that book where Gertley told you to sell the first A to B equals CD to the upside in a bear market. And that's what you've got when you take a look at the market that we are in right now in the financial sector, giving you one of those huge signals yesterday. So with regard to JPM, watch those levels of support, but know that if you are long the financial sector, be careful because the sector itself has given you a sell signal out there. So I think that uh, takes care of all of the requests inside the Tiger's Den. Let's go take a look at some requests that have come in by phone out here. Uh, those phone requests, the first one coming in from Robert B. And Robert says, would you please review SLV? That is the ETF for, B, for silver. SLV. Oh, we'll be right back, folks. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So uh, we we're taking a look at a, a question, or beginning to take a look at a question from Robert B. And Robert's uh, question is, would you please review uh, SLV during your radio show? I'm considering taking a short position, intermediate term time frame, and wanted to get your thoughts. So because you're taking a look at an intermediate term time frame, Robert, what I would be waiting for is really a couple of things out here. The first thing I'd be waiting for, and I totally get the picture and I understand it, if you're going to, from an intermediate term time frame, if you were going to use your weekly chart as your signal, then what you would notice is that on the SLV, and we're going to switch from the SLV over to the silver contract, but just simply, Robert, if you were just making a decision only based on the SLV, you would notice that there was a weekly profile that formed above price. And the bottom of that profile is usually resistance. That's 1496. I realize it's only 20 or 19 cents from where price is trading right now. But on the other side of the chart, on the left hand side, you can see an A to B equals CD to the upside. That doesn't complete until about the 1572 level out there. So I would just uh, I would just be patient. Now, in being patient out here. The other thing I would be looking at is really the silver contract. And inside the silver contract, and I apologize, but well, I, I can actually show the A to B equals CD for silver on another chart out here. Uh, today is going to be bar number eight, Robert, of a TD set up nine count. I would wait for the next couple of days. Uh, if a TD nine count is going to form a top, as it did back here, uh, let me get my cursor out here. Uh, it did form with a TD nine count on bar number nine on January 8th out there. Um, you know, maybe it's going to do the same thing, which says that we should see uh, wait, wait for wait for at least tomorrow. Let the pattern at least form out here. But even if it forms, remember, it can also be bar number 10 if this is going to show the top or the bottom. When the bottom formed out here on the silver contract, it was bar number eight of a TD nine count. So each of us from a daily perspective should really understand what Robert is is looking at. The question is, in the case of silver, Will silver be able to go ahead and complete that A to B equals CD pattern to the upside? Silver, that would take you up to about $17.23. I don't know if it will um, out here, Robert. We just have to take things one step at a time. Because you're talking about intermediate term time frame, let this prove itself to you. Let it prove itself to you before you go ahead and step into that uh, position. Now, if I were to say to myself, well, what are the short term time frames showing us for silver out here? That's something I should take a look at. Let's go look at the 30 minute time frame chart. Does the 30 minute time frame chart have any kind of a topping pattern? And the answer is it does. Uh, it generated Rhodes Mintum indicator top with this bearish reversal candle out here. You can see price moving higher, doing with less relative energy. But remember, when a top forms or a bottom forms, in this case here, when a top forms, what we're really looking for is to understand what does what do sellers, what are sellers able to do from the standpoint of pushing price down to or through support. In this case here, what we know about sellers, they didn't have the strength to bust support. And that was at $15.97. Price got down there, tested it, rejected it. So even on a short term time frame, Robert, you don't have any convincing or compelling information to suggest that you would take that short position or at least take it right now. So hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. The next question coming in here from Tom G. And Tom says, uh, uh, I'm reentering a long position in uh, J dust uh, this morning at a buck 18 looking to see what you think today. So J dust, let's uh, go ahead and punch that up on our screen out here. J D U S T. So let's go ahead and get this thing populated. Actually, I should have done it on a different screen out here. I've got a few technical issues going on out here. Uh, I think it is because we have school going on in the other rooms. And so there's a lot of computer stuff going on in this house right at this moment. Uh, but let's go, uh, and it's 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 creating havoc for me, but, oh, JDST. I put in the wrong ticker symbol. Well, that's why nothing came up. JDST out here. So here's what we know about, geez. Oh, so this was, uh, well, man, I don't understand. Huh? So the profiles aren't going to help us out a whole lot. Um, wow. So this is the bear version. So JDST out here. You know, 
Tom, because of the correlation, because of the correlation between gold and the miners out here, let's just go take a look at uh, Goldilocks and kind of similar to what we did inside of uh, uh, inside of. Uh, so here, let me. Okay, it popped up on my screen. I know you're you're kind of a shorter term uh, trader using shorter term signals. So here's what we can see. Now it made sense if I'm just looking at a 30 minute time frame, and we just use again the same patterns on a 30 minute that we can take a look at daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Doesn't really matter. We can see that at 11 o'clock this morning, price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy, generates a Rhodes momentum indicator pattern when it creates that little morning star. That's a three candle. It doesn't have to be three candle. It could be four or five. But in this case, here was a three river morning star a bullish pattern. But what price has not been able to do out here, Tom, on a short term time frame is take out resistance. So here you've got a bottom pattern says bulls should be able to try to take out resistance. Have they done it? No. On a 30 minute time frame, that's a buck 30. Now price is trading in between support and resistance on a 30 minute time frame. Buck 21 is your support level. You got in at a buck 18. Your stop should be a buck 18. Really, that's a that's a simple thing out there. Now, when it comes to carrying it overnight, holding it overnight, um, you know, you've got to in your mind be able to say, yeah, you know, I think that gold has actually um, topped out here. I don't know that that is the uh, case. And so let's pull up the uh, gold contract just yet. Give me a second. Now, this is going to be on the 30-minute time frame for, for gold. But I actually wanted to get over to these charts here. So here we take a look at gold. We know that gold is above its weekly, its daily profile out here. We can see there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's give you the exact price projection on that, the A point, March 16th. The B point is out here on March 25th, the C point, the retracement, uh, right into April 1st, the top of that daily profile, much like Jim and I were talking about on the instrument that he was looking at and saying, hey, pull back to the top of that profile, old resistance becoming new support. So I don't see any, and I believe that today on the, uh, for, from gold standpoint, it's uh, like silver. I believe it's in bar number seven, if my if memory suits me correct out here. Um, yeah, today will be bar number seven. So, Tom, the real, you know, will gold be able to complete that A to B equal CD to upside at 1821 or in that vicinity? And with it being bar number seven, I don't have any real shorting reasons out here. You can look at short term time frame pro profiles. Everything is above the bottom of a uh, profile out there. Um, I see what you were looking at, but I don't, I, I'll be careful out here. I think still gold could have another couple of days before it uh, creates that top. Maybe it's got more than that. About the most bearish thing that could unfold is gold makes a top or a high coming into uh, the end of April. Granted, it's only the uh, 14th, 15th, 14th out here. Um, that's setting up for a possible run down into the end of the year, into the end of the year. Be careful, folks, like in anything that we're trading. Don't get too caught up in the exuberance to either side out there. Just be smart. Watch the patterns. Go ahead and um, go ahead and use uh, stops out there. So, Tom, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Jay Des and what Stevie sees on his charts when we take a look at the uh, underlying instruments. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, now at 540 S&P 77. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Bill. Bill says, hey, Steve, want to short uh, BAC to its uh, first target. So let's go take a look at uh, Bank of America. Shows the same pattern, really, as the XLF out here, which was yesterday. It confirmed a Gartley sell pattern. And it did it right as it was coming into a resistance level. So if you take a look at the left-hand side of the chart out here, you're going to see that a Bank of America gap down on March 9th, did it with 145 million uh, shares. Price got up right into that level. It's uh, You're looking at the uh, bottom of the gap or the low of March 6th. It tags that area with lighter volume. Um, it does that on the trading day of April 9th. And then uh, yesterday, what we have out here, so that was on Thursday, what we have out here yesterday. So here's your A to B equals CD. It makes us slightly more than a one-to-one. -one. Remember, we use these price projections, 1, 1 1.272, 1 1.618, 2, 2618, 3.14. I don't know why I says 3.618. But... Um, uh, we use these as, as guidelines, not has to hit it right to the tick. You're waiting for the market to communicate to you its message, which is why I suggest when you're looking for a top, or you're looking for a bottom and a completed pattern, you wait for the bullish or bearish reversal candle. Well, you got that yesterday. You have follow through to the uh, downside. So we understand why Bill is 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 considering that or is in that trade. But his first level of support, you can see we already know you answer the question for me for Bill. Where's the first level of support? As you look at this Bank of America chart out here, we, we really went through this process with uh, Jim. He got us kicked off here trying to understand uh, where is support, where is resistance out here. And yes, you're exactly right. It's the top of that daily profile that price got above. That's 2261. So not really a great reward risk out here at this stage of the game, knowing that that's your first level of support. I don't know whether it will hold or not. I just know that that would be really become your first target. If price were to close below 22.61, your second target becomes 21.23, the center of the profile. And then finally, your third target would be 19.85. That would be the bottom of the profile out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Bank of America. We look at the daily time frame out here. Um, and uh, if I take a look at Bank of America on a short-term time frame, I'll do this for you. Well, here's the 30-minute time frame chart. We can see that when this actually topped on uh, the 13th, was it the 13th? Uh, the 9th, the 9th, the 10th. 
ninth or tenth out here. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Wave number seven, that's letter G. You can kind of see that. Bearish reversal candle. So even on the short term, the exact same tools that I teach you, subscribers, listeners out here, they, they work for really all time frames. Now, when it comes to an individual stock, please use a time frame where there's equal increments of time. 30 minute works out great, right? Because we have 13 equal increments of time. 15 minute chart will work out great, right? An hourly chart doesn't work out very well because you have six and a half hours worth of trading. So your last bar is going to be somewhat, it's going to be complete, but incomplete. So use a time frame where you've got a uh, the exact same number of bars in the time frame that is being uh, traded out here. But here's what we can see. Here's what Bill can see. Price is below Stevie's green line. So it's not as, as if uh, Bank of America is going to uh, roar back out here. And at 2509, you've got some significant resistance for that specific time frame. So that's what I see when I take a look at uh, BAC. I hope that that helps you out. Michael P. writes in. He says, how does GLD uh, look? Would you, uh, and then would you short gold here? So we answered the gold question, right? We're going to let that get higher. We're going to wait to see if the TD nine count pattern or the A to B equals CD, which is what we'd prefer, the A to B equals CD pattern and a bearish reversal candle out there. So we would definitely much prefer to see that. But with regard to Gilead, let's go take a look at the Gilead for you. See what this is communicating to us. And again, price right now in Gilead is sitting right at resistance. The top of its daily profile is 77.35, and price is trading at 77.35. So, Michael, we know that uh, Gilead is uh, dealing with resistance. Can it get through that resistance? That I don't know. We're just trying to understand support and resistance on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis. Price is above resistance, the top of those profiles out there. So, let's pull Gilead over. On my other charting tools out here, uh, although it doesn't have today's uh, data, my um, yeah, it doesn't have today's data out here. My apology, I can't fix that till we're off the air. But again, I'm just looking for looking for any other signals out here. So on the daily time frame, I really don't have anything. On the uh, weekly time frame, no, I don't have much. Uh, the monthly time frame. I don't have much, uh, anything more to add. You know, you've got real resistance at 88.85. That's on the monthly time frame. Real resistance at 84.73. That's the weekly time frame. We can see how prices hit those areas and it's pulled back, but still prices above the weekly and the monthly profile. So it's really trading between support and resistance out here. And uh, I don't have anything really to add on the uh, daily uh, time frame more than what we just took a look at, which is prices at resistance level out there. So, Michael, I hope that helps you all both with Gilead as well as gold. Uh, and thanks so much for writing in. Uh, Eric writes in, Eric E. So that I have uh, da, 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 been carrying for years. Wants to take a look at the two stocks. GSS is the uh, is the first stock. GSS. And he's just looking for a place to consider exiting. So to the extent that you wanted to exit, what price here did today was it got up and it tagged the top of its daily profile, $2.84. Volume behind this move so far is 785,000 shares today, going into where there was a bit of a downdraft that started with, with lighter volume. That was, I'm sorry, with, with volume, 505. Let me pull this back a little further on the left. Hmm, 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 hmm. Let me uh, let me get this going on my other charting system. So GSS, I just want to see if there's any patterns associated with hitting that resistance level for you. And the other one you want to was TGB to Seiko Mines, I believe. So you are at resistance on the daily time frame. We know that. If this can close above 284, then the place where you'd want to exit the position is between 312 and 317. The 312 comes from the bottom of the monthly profile, 317, the top of the weekly profile. So those are really lining up with each other out here. Um, dang, my other charts haven't completed just yet. That's a bummer, GSS. Let me do this here. Let's just go and take a look at uh, TGB for you while my other charts continue to load. Maybe they'll get loaded by the time we're done. we we'll take a look at Tseko Mines. So Tseko Mines doing the exact same thing. So if you are looking to exit this, your ideal exit, 
assuming that this is over, would be at the top of a profile at resistance. Well, in the case of TGB, that's 31 cents. It's trading at 31 cents as we speak right now. So you've got two of those gold stocks that are trading right at a resistance level. I think the other one was, yeah, and, and even Gilead was. Now, if price can close above that level, so the last time that price was up here into Seiko Mines was the trading day of April 7th. 600,000 shares, your lighter volume. So it doesn't appear that this is going to really be able to bust it to the up upside. And even if it does, it's got resistance of two pennies higher at 33 cents, which is the top of the uh, weekly profile. And price here trading below the uh, monthly level. Let me pull over TGB on uh, this one here. And I don't know why the other chart's not uploading, or, but, but it isn't. And we're about to go to a break. Hey, we'll be right back, and we'll finish off taking a look at Seiko Mines, TGB. Markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, um, Eric, uh, Eric in Boston, who wanted me to take a look at the uh, Tseco Mines out here. I couldn't come up with anything else during the break. Um, you know, you've got uh, you've got this run in a resistance. It creates a shooting star. Uh, that's on April the seventh. Uh, it's trading right in the resistance, and so, you know, you've got to make the decision from there. The next level of resistance, as we said, is thirty. Three cents and then uh, 41 cents out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, let's take a look at the markets overall out here. Um, 
let's again keep everything in perspective. Here's the Dow. So we take a look at the Dow. All that the Dow has been able to do is a 50% retracement. 23,891 would have been that exact number. If you go back historically and take a look at the 1929, you take a look at several other um, counter trend moves to the upside, they've found resistance at the uh, at the 50% uh, retracement level. There's an A to B equal CD that uh, may be underway. That sets up your Gartley sell pattern. So you certainly want to be on the lookout uh, for that pattern to uh, complete out here. In the case of the uh, Dow, the A to B equal CD would get you up towards that 0.618 retracement level, 25,116. I am not saying that the Dow will get up there. Uh, the Dow uh, equity futures contract, uh, shoot. Well, no, I can show you that here. Let's just move this. Uh, uh, M20 out here. So it's a focusing on the Dow. The Dow actually generated a potential topping pattern yesterday, and that high has not been able to be, has not been taken out. That's a bearish reversal. It's a key reversal session yesterday. And that's a bearish reversal candle. So the A to B equals CD at the upside may not complete out here. Watch yesterday's high, 23,911. We're trading at 23,832. And why is that important? I saw a post inside the Tigers Den about the NDX and the NASDAQ and so forth, and the NASDAQ is moving higher. The big money and the smart money, folks, is taking a look at the Dow. When there's major market corrections, the Dow will top out before the NASDAQ, the so-called group of, of, um, of retail traders out there. Be careful. Be very, 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 very careful. But thanks so much for being here, folks. Stay tuned. Two more great hours are lined up. You've got your favorite polar bear, David White, Tom O'Brien, to take us on home. And I'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday. Take care, folks.